Misafirler, tekrar hoş geldiniz. Çok zor bir şey olduğunu biliyorum ya. Ben de biraz hava alayım diye dışarı çıktım. Ee, İstanbul Boğazı'nın bu en kritik noktasında bu kadar güzel bir ortamda e, bedava yapabilecek bu kadar çok şey ve sektörden bu kadar çok insan varken e, tekrar bu salona girmek kolay bir şey değil. Fakat bir küçük hatırlatma olarak e, söyleyeyim. E, etkinliğimizden sonra Parti modunda zaten aynı alanları kullanacağız doyasıya e, akşamın geç saatlerine kadar. Dolayısıyla e, biraz daha sabrınızı rica ediyoruz. E, hava güzel olmaya devam eder umarız diyerek e, sıradaki konuşmaya geçelim istiyorum. Çünkü benim de merakla beklediğim konuşmalardan bir tanesi e, programın açılışında da değindiğim gibi oyunlaştırmadan söz edeceğiz birazcık. E, Türkçesiyle gamification. Ee, Yasmin Karatas bizlere anlatacak bu e, dünyayı. Kendisi Mart 2015'ten bu yana Accenture Digital Interactive'de stratejik tasarım ve oyunlaştırma e, danışmanı olarak görev alıyor. E, ve e, dijital dünyada, e, dijital bir dünyada oyunlaştırma başlığıyla bize bu mucizevi alanın işte istihdamdan e, elektronik ticarete kadar birçok nimetlerine şahit olduğumuz bu e, tekniğin dijitaldeki yaratıcı uygulamalarına değinecek. Alkışlarınızla kendisini sahneye davet ediyorum. Yasmin Karatas. So, hi and welcome to my talk. Yeah, I'm Jasmine. Um, I'm working for Accenture Interactive and um, we are the world's biggest and fastest growing agency. According to Ed Age agency report, I think it was, uh, it came out last, last week. And we help our clients to transform into the digital age. And what digital transformation means, it is the core of human being. Not only the core of, you know, like doing something into digital, And that's what I want to talk about, about gamification. And actually, it all started around 2012. The buzzword gamification started there. And um, it started with one revolutionary game. Do you know which one it was? Maybe you played it. It actually was World of Warcraft. Why became gamification at that point so big? I mean, World of Warcraft started 2004. And in 2012, they looked at the facts and figures. And what came out there was the players all together. I mean, it was in average, it was 10 million to 12 million people who played it. In sum, they played the total evolution of mankind. That means they played 5.96 million years. In some, why? That was the big reason behind it. Why put it a so much effort in game? And so the research started. What motivated those people to putting such great effort in that? And when it comes to gamification, we think gamification is, or my client, when I talk to them about it, they think, oh, you know, it's a game. It's just a game and you will lose time when you're doing this game. It will distract you from work. It will distract you. It is a time loss. And as well, they sometimes say to me, uh, no, you know, you get lost in space out there. You, you people not working then if they would have fun, but why should it be contradicting? And at what, what came out, like when they did research on that. So my question is now, what, what is then gamification when it's not about like games in that kind of reason that we play all the time or that we're losing actually time by playing something or that we're getting a loss of reality? So gamification, when we researched, we looked at games. We compelled the essence out of it. So what motivates the people now? We'll come to that later. What, did, what it is really about. And I put it into non-game context. So in our everyday life, into business surrounding. And they tried always to have a practical outcome there, which means that there's always like a KPI or a measurement behind it. Because why should I put gamification stuff or motivational behaviors into a non-game context if I don't have the benefit out of it? 
And so, it is all deep linked with us. It is about motivation and behavior. And games triggered it quite fast and quite good. And for this, we have to design it carefully. What will be the motivation behind it? And what will be the behavior we want to change? For this, we need to understand the people. We have to ask them. And that's what, where algorithm may as well come in. We have to analyze what the people want and what the people need. We have to go and ask them. But we have to be really carefully design it. I'll just give you a short story about that, because it can be a negative outcome, you know? Um, in a kindergarten, where you give your children to you and they, you know, like play together and that stuff. They wanted to have that their parents take their children or get their children right in time. So they thought it was maybe a good idea to say, yeah, give us free money, uh, like free euro, uh, when you're coming too late. Guess what happened? The people saw, oh, nice, free euro. Here, there's my kid care about it, I paid for it. So they didn't come in time, they come even later, because they paid, right? So they were rethinking and adjusted it. And then the idea was, okay, every minute you're too late, you pay one euro. And guess what happened? They came earlier to get the children. So why was that? Because not of the money, it was the social pressure. With every euro, it took in their account that they were bad parents, literally. Like with every euro raising, they got a bad feeling. So they wanted to make sure to get their kids right at the point of time. Um, and I wanted to ask this question to you. Do you know this feeling? Do you know this deep feeling in you when you thought when you were a little child and you were thinking, oh my gosh, I'm the hero of the world. When we are adults, we're kind of losing that. Why? And think of the last time when you had it, when you worked, when you thought, oh my gosh, something happened. I never could believe that this would happen. That's what we call an epic win. And that's so important that we give something like that back, and that's a motivational behavior. This is what we call epic calling and meaning. If we put and give our people a meaning for what they're working for, they work for it, you know, because they really believe in this kind of purpose. Apple is doing this, for instance. Or as well, you know, other companies like Spotify, they have people or startups using that quite often because they have something nobody else could do. Because they're people believing in that. And that's where it comes to us, to our brains. It was figured out that games actually kind of in the limbic system, it could, you know, like the hormonal outcome is so big that you immediately change your behavior. The reason is we have rituals, you know, like brushing teeth or going to lunch or eat in a certain time or behave in a certain way. And our system, so our brain, our algorithms in our brain, they look that it is always the best amount, you know, like that you lose not that much power, so I mean energy in case of energy, and um, to do that stuff. But if we're having a trigger there, which gives you a hormonal outcome which is bigger than you ritual doing it, you say, ah, your brain says to you, ah, maybe that's a better kind of doing it. And that's then when you change behavior. You have to rapidly change it or you have to rapidly rehearse it that you are able to change for better. And where is the digital now in that kind of? Because now it's kind of analog, we could adapt it in our daily routines. It is around us. Think of now you're sitting on with your phones there and Twittering and um, getting contact with your people around you or just get some information. And that's the world we're living in. It's a digital world, right? You're in digital um, agencies, you're in digital companies. And when it comes to gamification in a business background, we're having, I would say we have those four kind of elements. We're having product gamification. Product gamification means that we're having usage through enjoyment. That means we're having marketing products that it's more engaging and fun. 
all of you know eBay better than win. And when I see a trench coat I really want to have on eBay, you know, you bet on it, and then you see, oh my gosh, somebody else were higher than me. But you, you already own it, you know, because you bet it on it. So you really want to have that code. And then you bet it over, you know, like you say, OK, I want to bet 500 euros. And that's the cut. But instantly, you, you know, because you were competing, or you are in a competition, you go higher. And you're ending up with 600 or something like that. That is kind of a gamification background, right? Then we're having workplace gamification, which means innovation through collaboration. Actually, that's kind of design thinking stuff when we inspire and motivate employees towards work. What does that mean? I mean, all of you have employees who are inspired by what you are doing. And maybe they have great ideas how to change the process for better. Why not listening to them and engaging them, getting those ideas done and on the road? There's the 20 percent uh, rule of Google, which they had in future uh, in, in former times, not in future in former times, or as well uh, FedEx. FedEx has FedEx Weeks, where they gave people kind of free time, free space to uh, deal with their kind of inspired topics and bring it back into the company. You know, because they as well have their ownership and social proof and could show, hey, I can change something for better. And we as well have marketing gamification, which means loyalty through communication. Apple is a really good um, case to say about that, because they, they generate just a unique experience designed for a certain kind of product. I mean, we have probably a lot of people here sitting with, with iPads, iPods, or as well with iPhones, or Macs, or whatever. And why is it so big? Because they build a kind of religion around it. They build a kind of exclusiveness for it, and that's about, you know, as well, an aspect which comes from gamification. Restricting, maybe. Not everybody may could have an Apple, or not everybody want to have it. And we have lifestyle gamification. I mean, who, who is, like, looking how much step he made today? It would be good to raise hands or using free latics or something like that. Who is doing that? Doing fitness and sports and track it? OK, some of you. That's as well a gamification kind of way, right? It is development through motivation. When it comes to business, it can be a business uh, case you're using, or as well, it could be that you enhance your people. You now like to learn something new, to educate for better, to understand your people. Where do you want to skill yourself towards to? And um, in Accenture, we're having quite a lot of you know, um, self-studies or trainings and stuff, and that's where where we, where we have to look at, and we're looking at a skill set, we're looking at the strengths of our people, that we give them the opportunity to develop themselves further, like I'm doing in gamification. That's my part. I'm standing for that. And my company give me the opportunity to develop myself further to that. I have a broad commitment to that. And I help not only because I'm helping myself, I help my company to develop better, right, in that way. And sure, I have some examples. Uh, so we are having those uh, 30 days challenge. We applied quite a lot. Um, I show you a short video on that. And the music should go on. But <laughs> I just let you look <laughs> without, <laughs> without music. Ah, he is coming. Why we put it? 
why we invented the 30 days challenge. Because when we do transform, transformation or digital transformation for huge companies, we found out that it's not just happening like that. There are always human beings involved in a process. And you, if you leave them behind and you not ask him then, or you not educate them what is changing or communicate with them, they will never adopt it. Never is a hard word, but it is like that. It seems that they are even there just like, say, I don't want to be part. They leave the country or they, they work everything against it. That's the reason why we're putting this 30 days challenge. And it actually, it's, we use it quite often in an app. Um, we, put in, we, we consult our, our people there, what they need, what kind of people they're having they want to educate, if it's a HR or if it's a, a product company or wherever. You, know, you have to know the people. You have to look at the analytics, what they tell you. It is as well that we get quite a lot of feedback on that because it's not only to help them understand and make their journey through that, it's as well that we get something out of that. We got insights out of that. And we know our users, our, our employees better, right? And that's something what, what is really, really important in a digital transformation. It's sometimes we really leave that behind. And so we form habit. We have a social proof because you are in a group. We're building a community. We're building communitas. That's what it's called from the people who have researched that kind of. And we're having a growth of mindset because they learn and we make learning fun for them. And they understand, oh, yeah, that's the reason why, why they are doing it and why I am part of it. And they see a bigger sense in it. So that's when the intrinsic motivation comes in. You know, it's not always about points, badges, and leaderboards. It is about us, what we feel, how we feel, how we behave, how we are as human beings. And I brought as well another one. Actually, we put it against Turkcell, and we as well developed a map. It was together with Fjord. And I'll show you as well a short video here. Fjord is as well a part of Accenture. It's a digital agency as well, so it is part of us. And that's how it looks like. And um, so uh, Trixel reached out to us and they said, ah, I want to have more loyalty with my users. And we just said, mm, okay. And actually, it was for young, so for the young adults. But it was not enough to just put in more loyalty on that. They didn't know how to put that on. And we found out that loyalty for them is something different for Gen Y. You know all Gen Y and this big buzzword as well, and that they are hard to get and hard to motivate, and they don't want to work, and whatever, and what else. And we found a way. We found a way to motivate them. We gave them information. We gave them the opportunity to work together, to build a community, to give them what they need, you know, not only just give them some, some incentives, it was incentives to go to the cinema, but not only with yourself, with your friend, you know, and you could tag them and you could interact with them, you could chat with them. That was something, this is something the Gen Y is really, you know, looking forward to having purpose, to communicate with the others, to being valued. And that's what we put in, in that app. And what we got out of that is we empowered the people. We empowered the people and get customer insights from that so that we can be better at the end. We're always adapting. That's very, very, very important in gamification as well. What we're learning are, what they are doing, how they are behaving. We are putting these metrics, and we know then what we can trigger with a certain kind of uh, gamificated kind of uh, tool back into the app and being better. 
and we understand our people. We understand and motivate them. Getting those insights, and that's the most important. We need to understand why we are doing it, not just what we are doing, why we are doing it. We seldomly ask this question, why? We always like, oh, what I have to do? Better ask why I have to do this, and what is the outcome? And we have a positive reinforcement, right? Here is the ba uh, badges, leaderboards, and uh, those stuff. It's the first step of doing it. It drives motivation at the first beginning, but that is not the end. As I said, we need to have the social proof, we have to look at our people, how they're behaving, that they need communication, that they need the loyalty and that stuff. And we build a community there. And now what, what are you thinking of? IT. IT is not just something. IT is us. We are building this IT. There will always be a human being interacting with robots, building the algorithm. The algorithm, yes, sure, will learn by its own and reflect maybe the behavior of us. But we are the one who are driving in the driver's seat. And please, ask your people, because they know maybe the answer if you don't know. So, any questions by now? Thank you. They are waiting for me to ask that question. Ah, uh, sorry. Var mı efendim sorusu olan soru sormak bedava birkaç soruya fırsat verebiliriz? Yok. Düşünmek isteyen varsa bir tane ben sorayım. I have one question sure. <clears throat> about this gamification thing. Uh, is, it, um, is it some kind of encouragement, motivation or manipulation? What do it you can think? be both, actually. That's the tricky part. And that's as well what we have to why we have to carefully design it. And we always have to think of that there's always a black side. That's what we call black hat gamification. You can motivate. Sure, you can force people to do some stuff. Mm -hmm. And we see it quite often as well. When we go to Instagram or we're having Facebook, we see that people tend to just put pictures on it and living in a kind of non-reality because they, they're earning likes and bad, like, you know, like the like stuff and that things. So yes, we can force people to do. I would not recommend to do that, but yes, there is a negative side as well. Yeah. So uh, while designing these process, uh, how do you approach the cultural issues Mm -hmm. You know, yep. it can't be a universal prescription, right? No, it can't be. Gamification is something we have to look first at our, at our business, right? When we go to the people, which cultural background do they have? Is it a Turkish company? The culture in Turkey works differently. The culture in Germany works differently. As well, the internal culture of the company works differently. We have really certainly look at those stuff. That's why we say the business part of gamification and understanding this stuff is kind of 80% like than to 20% just implementing it. We really have to carefully look at those kind of stuff, how the behavior is. Then we need to talk what you want to achieve as company, what the, what the employees or for whom we are creating it want to achieve, and then we're putting the, beha the desired behavior and then we put in the gamification on top of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, there's also, there should be, I think, a refinement process during yes. the uh, process, right? That's what we, it's a kind of, if you know, uh, design thinking process or agile or whatever kind, we're having this understand phase, the discovery phase, we're having um, the, the design or ideate and prototype phase, then we're having a test phase and implement. After that, it's not ending. When we implemented it, we're having insights and that needs to come. Re-evaluate. Yes. Re yeah, re-evaluate it and begin the process. Yeah, okay. Just in front of. Pick it. Var mı sorusu olan? Bir soruluk vaktimiz var. Let's give a last chance to the audience. <laughs> This means everything is clear. So thank you so much. Thank you. It was nice meeting. Thank you. Evet, Yasmin Karatas'ı dinledik. Accenture Digital Interactive'de stratejik tasarım ve oyunlaştırma.